क्वेश्चन थ्री डी क्वेश्चन थ्री पार्ट डी ओके इन ईच केस शो दैट द सर्कल पासिस थ्रू द गिवन पॉइंट सो इन दिस केस इफ इट पासिस थ्रू दिस सब्सटीट्यूट दैल्यूज फर्स्ट थिंग एंड देन लेफ्ट हैंड साइड शुड बी इक्वल टू राइट हैंड साइड सो लेट मी कॉपी दिस स्टेटमेंट फर्स्ट ओके Page one one nine, question three, part D. X minus two a whole squared plus y plus five a whole squared is equals to twenty a square, and the point to check is six a minus three a. <clears throat> so we just substitute it. X is six a. And y is negative three a plus five a whole squared is equals to this was twenty a square twenty a square so six minus two is four a whole squared plus two a whole squared four four times is sixteen a square two two times is four a square so twenty a square shown that was simple. Is it clear? Left hand side equals right hand side. Uh, yes, I understand. Now there's a uh, question E as well. E we right. Third as well. Okay. E part. Question three E. Equation is x minus three square root five whole square plus y minus square root five whole squared, and it must be equal to two square root ten whole square. And the point to substitute is square root five minus square root five. So value of x is square root five. Minus three square root five whole square plus value of five is negative square root five minus square root five whole square. So there are two things either directly. I think we should use our calculator directly and keeping the values in exact form. So square root five minus three square root five. This is Minus two square root five, whole square, minus two square root five, whole square. So if we simplify this, we get four times five plus four times five, twenty plus twenty, which is forty. And on the right hand side, we had two square root ten, whole square. Square of two is four into Ten is forty. So again, shown. If left hand side is equal to right hand side, it lies on the given equation. Clear? Yeah, yes, sir. That's clear. Thank you. Sir. Anyone else? Any question? This is six C. We did till six D. I didn't practice uh questions. Okay. I did the first uh five, but they were easy. Okay. Other we'll, problem solving. We'll do a few questions before we move to next exercise. Okay. Let's see if we find something different. Question number five: The line PQ is a diameter. Uh, we did this yesterday. So. And seventh as well. So let's see. We did question ten. Few parts. Let's try this eleventh question. A circle 
C has equation x square plus y square plus 12x plus 2y equals k where k is a constant. Find the coordinates of this center. So directly we will go for our formulas directly. Question number 11. X square plus y square plus 12x plus 2y is equals to k. So, coordinates of center are coefficient of x is 12. So, half of it and sign change minus 6. Coefficient of y is 2. Half of it and sign change. So, this is the coordinates of center. Find the coordinates of center C. Then it said state the range of possible values of k. Okay, let's check what this is. A circle C has equation this, where k is a constant. Find the coordinates of C done. State the range of possible values of k. So, if we try to solve for radius. Radius is f square plus g square minus c whole square root. If we bring this k to left hand side, that would be negative k. So, f is minus 6 squared plus g is minus 1 squared negative into negative k. This is our radius. Whatever we do, radius will always be greater than 0. If it is equal to 0, it is not a circle. So, greater than 0, solving for this equation, we get 36 plus 1 plus k square root is greater than 0 taking square on both sides so 37 plus k is greater than 0 so whatever k is it is greater than negative 37 so possible values of k are more than 37 if it is 37 it is not a circle it is a point radius is 0 is this part clear 11b Uh, yes, sir. I don't know. So the, the coefficient of y, do we uh, half it as well? Always. Or only the coefficient of x. Always, always. Coefficient you have to of half both of them. Half, yes, coefficient of x, half and sign change. Coefficient of y, half and sign change. Always. Okay. Then there was this exercise 6D. Find the coordinates of the point where the circle this meets the x-axis. At x-axis, it is x comma 0, just the substitution. Question number 5 says, show that this line does not meet the circle. So, it does not meet the circle. Let us try this question. Exercise 6D. Question number 5. The line is x minus y minus 10 is equals to 0. And the equation of circle is x square minus 4x plus y square is equals to 21. If it does not intersect, that means this will be the case either this or this sad face or smiley face. So we make subject any of the values I'm picking up y. So x minus 10 is equals to y. Substitute in this new equation. This is x square minus 4x and y is x minus 10 whole squared is equals to 21. Simplifying x square minus 4x a square minus 2ab plus b square is equals to 21. So x square plus x square 2x square minus 24x and 100 minus 21 is 79 equals to 0. Now, it is already given that it, it does not intersect. So, we just have to show. So, b square minus 4ac, checking for b square minus 4ac, which is minus 24 squared minus 4a is 2 and c is 79. So, 24 square is 576 minus 4 into 2 into 79 is 632. 
which is clearly a negative value. So negative 56. And the reasoning is b square minus 4ac is less than 0. Therefore, it does not intersect. Question 6 says, show that the line this meets the circle at only one point. At only one point and find the coordinate of point of intersection. Okay, it meets at only one point and finding the point of intersection. So question 6 is, x plus y is equals to 11. First part and the second part of this question is x square plus y minus 3 whole square is equals to 32. So if we make y subject again, y is equals to 11 minus x from equation 1. Substitute this equation in equation 2. This is equation 1, this is equation 2. All of this is actually simultaneous equation. So x square plus y is 11 minus x minus 3 whole squared is equals to 32. x square plus 11 minus 3 is 8 minus x whole square equals 32. x square plus a square minus 2ab plus b square is equals to 32. So this is 2x square minus 16x plus 32 is equals to 0, dividing the whole equation with 2. x square minus 8x plus 16 is equals to 0. Going for midterm breaking. x square minus 4x minus 4x plus 16 is equals to 0. So x minus 4, it said, firstly it said show that it intersects at one point. I actually forgot to show that point and just went to solve for it. So b square minus 4ac, one thing is we find the answer and that will be only one coordinate. The other thing is if it is demanding to show, we have to do it by the step. So b Sir? square is minus 8. Jivite. I have a question. When you move 32 to the other side, shouldn't the sign also change to minus 32? I just wrote this 64 minus 32. The remaining answer is 32. Oh, sorry. And now? No issues. So, 8 square minus 4 into A into C. So, 8 square is 64 and 4 into 64 is 64. So, 0 is equals to 0. It is shown that it intersects at one point only. And then for solving... x into x minus 4 minus 4 into x minus 4 is equals to 0. x minus 4 into x minus 4 equals to 0. So there is only one answer which is x is equals to 4. And y is equal to 11 minus x. 11 minus 4 is 7. So the point of intersection is x 4 and y 7. The line touches at this point. Clear? Okay. So yes, this sir. was more of simultaneous equation and less of circles. Question number seven. Can someone tell me how we will solve this? Which one is it? Seven or eight? Question seven. Let's Do we make them into simultaneous it. equations? That's and then, right. And then? From there, we get two answers from quadratic equation, right? For A and B. 
when we solve it simultaneously, we get A and B. And yes, it will form quadratic equation. So once we get A and B, this is part A. How will we solve part B? Just the thinking process. Then I'll solve it. It says show that AB is the diameter. And the radius of the circle and maybe. That's right. That's right. And double and... it to see if it equals the distance between AB. That is right. This is exactly how we'll do this. Question number seven. Y is equals to 2x minus 2 and x minus 2 whole squared plus y minus 2 whole squared is equals to 20. So first we find the point of intersection which is A and B. So equation 1, equation 2. Put equation 1 in equation 2. So this is x minus 2 whole squared plus 2x minus 2 minus 2 whole squared is equals to 20. Simplifying it, x minus 2 squared, 2x minus 4 squared is equals to 20. So a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, a squared. 2 to the 4, 4 to 16 minus 2ab plus b square is equals to 20. So x square and 4x square is 5x square and negative x, 4x and minus 16 is minus 20x. Then this is 20, 4 and 16 and there is another 20. So this is 0. So we take out common 5x. And we are left with x minus 4 is equals to 0. So first bracket is 5x equals to 0. Second bracket is x minus 4 equal to 0. So first value of x is 0. Second value of x is 4. And y was this. y is equals to 2x minus 2. So 2 into 0 minus 2 is minus 2. So one of the coordinate is x, 0 and y minus 2. Other is y is equals to 2x minus 2. 2 into 4 minus 2 is 8 minus 2. That is 6. So x4 and y6. So we will name them A and B. Now we have to show in second part that AB is the diameter. So firstly going for the distance formula. x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole squared. 4 minus 0, 6 minus minus 2, 4 square is 16, 6, 7, 8, 8 square is 64. So this is 80, square root 80. Now we go for radius. Our radius was r is equals to square root f square plus g square minus c. What is the value of f? Value of f. Um, uh, minus one? Is it... No, it is not minus one. Would it, would it be 10? It is 2. You're uh, mixing I it. But you had to invert the sign as well. I'll show you. I'll show you. That was x square plus 4x plus y square plus 10y is equal to something. This is one way. The other way is x minus 3 whole square plus y plus 7 whole square is equal to 4 squared. These are two types. Both are equation of circle, but two types. In this second one, you just pick these values and change the sign. That is 3, minus 7. In the first one, you pick it up, divide by minus 2. 
it is half and sign change so in first one it will be minus 2 comma minus 5 half and sign change okay i'll write the basic equations general forms again it was x minus a whole squared plus y minus b whole squared is equal to r square in this case radius is r and center is a comma b and x square minus 2 fx plus y square minus 2 gy is equals to c so in this case radius is f square plus g square minus c whole square root and coordinates of center are half of coefficient of x and sign change half of coefficient of y and sign change these are the two types one is completing square form the other is quadratic form is it clear you can go back Sir, to can, the... can you scroll down to the bottom uh... The question we just did. The question? Yeah, no, yeah, this one is on the bottom here. So maybe, uh, yeah, I understand what. So there's two methods of doing this, right? Is there yeah, a two ways to write method? Two ways to write. I'll show yeah, you. Is we there... started with this. I'll show you. Okay, this is type one. And in the very next line is type 2. So in type 1, we just copy the values. And in type 2, we change the sign and divide it by 2. Look at this again. First type, when you have whole squares, when it is completed square form, you just copy them. So the line in the first at the top is 3 comma minus 2. The line at the top, it is positive 13 and positive 12. Line at the top, it is positive 1 and negative 2. This is one type. This is other type. You choose the coefficient, subtract it, uh, change the sign and divide it with 2. 16, we get minus 8. When we have minus 8, we get positive 4. Looking at this equation, Coordinate of center is half and sign change. So coefficient of x is minus 14, half and sign change, making it plus 7. Coefficient of y is 16, so half and sign change, making it minus 8. Are you getting the point? Yes, sir. Yes. So in this question, it is already uh, in completed square form so 2 and 2 and when you take 20 to the other side this becomes minus 20 that is c so squared 2 square is 4 plus 4 plus 20 square root and this is square root 28 So, okay, R square, let me check. We can actually pick up the radius directly. Square root 50 and divide by 2 is 2, square root 5 and square root 20 is 2, yes. May I write it like this? x minus 2 whole square plus y minus 2 whole square is equals to square root 20 squared just to give it this form x minus a whole square plus y minus b whole square is equals to r square so when it is actually squared the number inside is the radius 
So the radius is square root 20, copying the radius and dividing the diameter by 2. Square root 80 by 2 must be equal to the radius. And the calculator says that square root 20 is 2 square root 5. And square root 80 by 2 is again 2 square root 5. Either you multiply radius with 2 or you divide the diameter by 2. Clear? You either divide the diameter by 2 and what was the other thing you said? Or you multiply the radius with 2. Okay. okay. This is dia by 2 is equals to radius or diameter is equals to 2 times radius. That would be square root 80 is equals to 2 square root 20 which is 4 square root 5 is equals to 4 square root 5. This is the sixth chapter going on and uh, we almost started on 17th. So we have 12 chapters in this book and 12 chapters in book 2 and then when you start school you will tell me if you are preparing for mechanics or statistics. So depending on your choice or uh, whatever the school follows and the exam you will be giving. And then there will be a second choice if you are preparing for AES or complete A-levels after two years. So we'll complete this book and we'll move on to past papers. Yes, Mahad? So which one would you recommend we do? Mechanics or statistics? It is actually one and the same thing because if you do mechanics in your first year, you'll be doing statistics in second and vice versa. To complete your A-levels, you have to complete your papers. And the second thing which I would suggest is always go with the flow. That means if the school is asking you to go for statistics first. So you should go for statistics. You will be getting this help from me, the school and your friends as well. So that, it, that will create a healthy competition. If the school is going for statistics and we choose mechanics. So you won't get any sort of revision. For example, uh, we've done first five chapters and you start school. So that will be actually your revision. So if we like, uh, suppose if we finish this and we start with statistics and school goes to mechanics. So then there is no revision, but your workload will increase. You're doing statistics with me and mechanics with school. So you should do the one that you're doing or? We we should follow school. At the end, we have to complete all of this. But we should follow school. That will not increase your burden. And that will give you an extra advantage of revision. Um. So what if uh, the schools are doing different things? No issues. Like one school is doing another. Pa paper, paper one, paper two are same. The only choice the school has to make is mechanics and statistics. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If, uh, let's say, uh, Abbasi, his school is doing statistics and my school is doing mechanics, then which one would the class follow? Then we'll do both. We'll plan how to cover them. Okay. Uh, we, we had such case last year. There was one student who was doing statistics and every other student was on mechanics. So we had a different class, different schedule. Mm. Okay. okay, so these are the questions. Definitely, uh, you will be practicing them and only then you can know if you have a grip or confusion. Next task is use tangent and chord properties. So from O levels, the first property is that tangent and radius are always perpendicular to each other. Second is, let me write it here. There are a few properties. Okay. 
tangent and circle and radius so when you have a circle and a center we draw this tangent and radius it always makes an angle of 90 degrees at the point of tangency so if i draw another line which is parallel to the tangent but inside the circle so this should look like this and if the line does not cross the circle we name it a chord so that's a chord what is the property of chord and radius now this is not actually a radius the length is less than the radius if we draw this chord and this line this is again perpendicular because consider this first circle these lines were parallel so this is always 90 degrees greater the length of the chord means it is closer to the center of the circle for example this a b and c d length of c d is more than a b and it is closer to the center of the circle and then length of x y is even greater it is more closer to the center so the property first property is there are 90 degrees second is it actually divides it into equal halves making these two congruent triangles because this is radius radius two sides equal and divided the bottom line in equal half and then there is a common side if i name them a o b and p so we have two triangles a o is equal to o b the reason is radius and then a p is equals to p b the reason is i have actually forgotten the name of this op length the property is chord and radius it intersects at 90 degree and bisects it and the third point is op of left triangle is equal to op of right triangle common side and if you remember the properties was by s s s they are congruent so first property that the tangent and radius are 90 degrees second property that it splits into equal half and it is 90 the third thing is it creates a congruent triangle fourth thing and it is called two tangents from one external point two tangents from one external point so if we draw one tangent here and another tangent here two point two tangents from one external point naming this point as p center as o and we know that the radius and the tangent and they make an angle of 90 degrees so what actually happens is this length is equal to this length the given radius is equal to the given radius and if we draw a line in between them this is again a congruent triangle Okay. use of tangents and chords the tangent to circle is perpendicular to radius and the circle at the point of intersection then the perpendicular bisector of chord will go through the center of circle perpendicular bisector always goes through this and equal halves if you have two tangents and they are parallel to each other obviously the distance between them will be a diameter and nothing new and then we have these questions the line this touches the circle at this find the radius of the circle show that the radius is perpendicular to the line so two demands of the question first is the radius this is exercise 6e 
pages 126 question number 1 x plus 3y minus 11 is equals to 0 and equation of circle is x plus 1 whole squared plus y plus 6 whole squared is equals to r squared it says the line touches this circle this at 2 comma 3 so x 2 and y 3 intersects at 2 comma 3 so first part is find the radius And the second part was that we have to show that the radius, show that the radius at point this is perpendicular to the line. Okay, we'll come later to that. First part is find the radius. How will we do that? V. Brainstorming. Um, isn't it the formula um, f squared plus g squared plus c whole root? If we are thinking about that formula, f squared plus g squared minus c, we do not have c. We can see f, that is 1, g, that is 6, but we do not have c. So, sorry. What else can we do? Yeah, yeah, anything? Could we white ones actually have a great solution always? We do the simultaneous equation. If we go for simultaneous equations, there are three unknowns x, y, and r, and we have two equations. So, no. Can you try to do a quadratic formula? Apply it on this. If we apply quadratic formula, Whenever we apply quadratic formula, the entire equation is either in form of x or in form of y. The coordinates 2, 3. So can't we just substitute that in? If we substitute this, yes. Wait. We can do okay. it. Okay. So x is 2. Why are we substituting it? Because we know that this point lies on the circle. x is 2 whole squared plus y is 3 whole squared is equals to r square. So 3 square is 9. 6 plus 3, 9 squared is 81 is equals to r square. That is r squared is equals to 90. So radius is equals to square root 90. So what is this actually? When you will go for practice, it will click in your mind that these sort of questions, how do we attempt them? Second part was that show that this point is perpendicular with the radius. <clears throat> so the line is tangent to the circle at this point. If we sketch them, a rough sketch, we know that the center is x minus 1, y minus 6. So x minus 1, y minus 6. This is somewhere here. And square root 90 is... 9.4 so roughly this is our circle and it is tangent at x2 and y3 2 comma 3 so the line is tangent at this point this is the sketch it is not the requirement of the solution but just to discuss things so we have to show that the radius is actually perpendicular to this so I know that this is 2 comma 3 and I know that this center is minus 1 comma minus 6. So may I find the gradient of these two points, this center and the point of intersection. So if I say center is minus 6 comma minus 1 comma minus 6 and the point given point is 2 comma 3. So the gradient is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Solving for the gradient y2 minus y1 
और x2 टू माइनस एक्स वन इज नाइन बाई थ्री विच इज थ्री एंड आई एम कॉपिंग द इक्वेशन दैट इज x प्लस थ्री बाई माइनस इलेवन इज इक्वल टू जीरो my first target was to find gradient of this m1 and then the second target is to find gradient of this line that is m2 so i'm making y the subject of the formula 3y is equals to minus x plus 11 y is equals to minus 1 by 3x plus 11 by 3 this is our new gradient so m1 times m2 is equals to minus 1 if this is the case they are perpendicular first gradient is 3 second gradient is negative 1 by 3 3 goes with 3 negative 1 is equal to negative 1 show that they are actually perpendicular clear Uh, yes sir let's try question number 2 so did you only have to find the gradient for that uh to show that they are perpendicular so we had to find both the gradients okay gradient m1 it came out to be 3 and gradient m2 which was minus 1 by 3 and then applying the formula m1 times m2 is equals to minus 1 we got left hand side equals right hand side hmm Okay. Thank you. Question number two. The point P is one comma minus two lies on the circle. Center is four comma six. It lies on circle. Center is this. It says find the equation of the circle. Part A, equation of circle so for the equation of circle we need two things one is center the other is radius so we already know what the center is and we already know one point which is on the circle so this distance is actually radius so radius is equals to x2 minus x1 whole squared plus y2 minus y1 whole squared whole square root So six. This is y. X two minus x one whole squared plus y two minus y one whole squared whole under the root. Four minus one is three square nine. Six plus four is eight. Eight square is sixty four. Square root seventy three. So we have the radius. And the general equation is x minus a whole square plus y minus b whole square is equal to r square. This is something which is in our mind, and we know that the coordinates of center are four comma six. So equation of circle will be x minus four whole squared plus y minus six whole squared is equal to r square. That is seventy three. any objection no sir um okay. so, so moving to b part the part of this question says find the equation of the tangent to circle at p tangent at p so we already assume something a circle center a point This is not the actual point. Obviously, it can't be. If you see, this is four comma six. How can this point be x one on the right? But we are just following the concept and solving for it. So, equation of tangent at the point of intersection actually means that gradient of these two points and gradient of the tangent would have a relation of m one into m two is equal to minus one because they are perpendicular. radius and tangent are perpendicular so finding the gradient of point p and c is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 bringing them down to avoid any clerical mistake so y2 
minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is 8 by 3. 8 by 3 is the gradient. So, because we know that tangent and radius are always perpendicular, m1 times m2 is equal to minus 1. 8 by 3 times m2 equals minus 1. So, our second gradient is negative 3 by 8. Now, we know the gradient and we know that it passes through minus 1 comma 2. So, y is equals to mx plus c. It passes through my 1 comma minus 2. 1 comma minus 2. y is minus 2. Gradient is minus 3 by 8. And x is 1 plus c. So, this becomes 3 by 8 minus 2 is equals to c. 8, 3, 16. So, c is minus 13 by 8 making the equation y is equal to minus 3 by 8 x minus 13 by 8. So, this is the equation. You can always rearrange. There is no issue in that. So, 8 y is equals to minus 3 x minus 13. Any of the form. G. There? Yes, sir. Let's see if we have something new. Or this is the last exercise. Tangent radius, tangent radius, circles and tangents. Okay, we have one more concept. That is again tangent and radius, tangent radius, tangent radius. Okay, this is the last concept, but we do need practice. My first aim is to complete this book and move on to past papers. Maximum, inshallah, in two or two and a half months, we'll complete book one and move to past papers this is chapter six we have 12 chapters but the chapters after these are a bit lengthy algebra and binomial are fine trigonometry trigonometric identities differentiation integration these last four topics are a bit lengthy exponential and logarithm is again simple Any questions if you would like to ask? Um, no, sir. No, sir. No. Please do practice them and do ask any questions where you feel any confusion. See you in next class.